Kimberly Lewis arrived in New York in 2004 as a student at the Pratt Institute. Ms. Lewis, who is from New Hampshire, lived in the dorms and after graduation settled into a rental in a mid-rise brick co-op building in Kensington, Brooklyn. Over time, the rent on her alcove studio rose to a reasonable $1,240 a month allowing her to squirrel away money for a purchase of her own. She often perused apartment listings in Brooklyn. It is what I would do to pass the time, even though it wasn't feasible to be buying anything at all, said Ms. Lewis, 32, a textile designer with a side business as a wallpaper designer. She envied the neighbors in her building, all co-op shareholders. Her colleagues started buying homes. The idea of owning a place of her own dogged her, though it seemed like a fantasy. So she began scrutinizing listings for co op studios in her neighborhood priced at around $250,000, although she was concerned about affording the required down payment, generally 20%. About three years ago, Ms. Lewis read about the Housing Development Fund Corporation, HDFC a city program that promotes home ownership in once derelict buildings. The prices of its co-ops were tantalizingly within reach. I made it my mission to learn everything I could, she said, although in some cases the buildings came with income caps that were too low for her. In other cases, however, she qualified. She signed up for a class on buying an HDFC co op given by the Urban Homesteading Assistance Board. The room was packed, but she learned attrition was high when it came to actually making a purchase. She resolved to follow through. Luckily, I love the thrill of the hunt, she said. Ms. Lewis knew she would get a small place in a no frills building probably a walk up. Her biggest priority was a laundry room or the ability to add a washer dryer. I didn't really have a grasp on what I could afford or what I needed to put down, she said. I was looking at the cheapest of the cheap. Then she discovered Neighbors Helping Neighbors, a counseling agency sponsored by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development and was connected with Robert McCool, the director of home ownership programs, who explained things like debt-to-income ratio, closing costs, and flip taxes. Craig's List, which Ms. Lewis checked daily, led her not to a studio but to a dilapidated HDFC two-bedroom on South 2nd Street in South Williamsburg $310,000 I could see my vision, she said. I showed the photos to friends, and they were horrified. I was okay with that because I didn't have much of a choice. Her offer of $280,000 was accepted, but the place was tied up in probate court and not yet sellable. Then Ms. Lewis learned that some HDFC co-ops required a down payment of just 5%. That's when what I was looking for kind of flipped, she said. If she had a two-bedroom, she reasoned, she could rent out a room. And Williamsburg, where there were more HDFC buildings than in many other places in New York, was a good location for her, cutting her commute time to Manhattan in half. Months passed, and she kept saving and hunting. By now, her heart was set on Williamsburg. I was looking for my diamond in the rough, she said. I saw some pretty bad things in really bad condition. One option was a two-bedroom on South 1st Street for $350,000. But it was a hall-less railroad flat, and would not offer her and a roommate much privacy. Point two years ago, she saw another two-bedroom nearby. She liked the layout, with windows in the kitchen and bathroom. A walk-up it had been lingering on the market she was very educated on H.DFCS, said the listing agent, Evelyn Magallanes, 
the owners broker at City Living Realty, who specializes in HDFC co-ops. The apartment was in decent shape, but the price, $429,000, with monthly maintenance in the low dollar 700s, was out of reach I put it in my back pocket and kept looking, Ms. Lewis said. She also kept checking on the place in probate court. I was really upset. I felt downtrodden. Then, nearly a year ago, Mr. McCool alerted her to a temporary change to the income cap in the city's Home First Down Payment Assistance Program. The cap had been raised to 120% of the area median income, from 80%. Now she qualified. Dot and with the home first loan, plus her savings, plus a mortgage, she was able to buy the two bedroom she had initially thought too expensive. Ms. Lewis paid $380,000 and arrived in the summer with her cat, Pasha. The apartment is just over 600 square feet, the same size as her old Kensington studio. I was super excited to personalize the space she said. Relatives helped her paint, the living room is pale pink, her bedroom is dark green. She found a roommate from Craigslist to defray expenses. Ms. Lewis, who wrote about her home buying experience on her blog, installed a portable washer that connects to the kitchen sink and an electric dryer slow but serviceable with an indoor vent. At last, she feels at home it is all possible because of the wonderful non-profits here in New York City that were able to give me advice, she said.